Good evening, everybody. This is Tom Azat for NeuromarketTrends.com, and welcome to my eighth video on Rapid Miner 5.0. Tonight, we are going to begin the topic of using time series and forecasting time series data in Rapid Miner. This is perhaps one of the hotter topics out there for Rapid Miner, and Rapid Miner has a very powerful set of time series data transformation and analysis operators. But before we begin, you got to have the time series plugin installed. When you downloaded Rapid Miner 5.0, you had an option to load in several plugins, and one of them needs to be the time series one. So I hope you did that. If you don't, put this video on pause and download it and install it. Okay. Before we begin today, I just want to let you know that when you are forecasting in using time series, using neural nets, uh, support vector machines, or other type of uh, learning operators, it's kind of dicey uh, to completely rely on the financial time series data itself. Uh, coming, trading the markets, especially in Forex and sometimes stocks, um, the markets themselves are very crazy, very chaotic, very volatile, and neural nets should not be solely relied on to make your trading decisions. They are an arsenal in your trading tools, but do not bet the house on them. Always, always, always use risk management and money management systems uh, to protect your capital. Neural nets, support vector machines, can give you a slight edge, and that's what we're here to learn about tonight. But always, always, always use risk management and money management before you make any trades. Now that I've drilled that in your head, let's begin. Tonight, I want to talk a little bit about the data discovery tools that the time series operators have. So we're going to concentrate on that for this video. In my ninth video, I want to actually start building a financial forecasting series model. And we will close out with the 10th tutorial video on actually modeling it and predicting time series. So I'm glad you're aboard. Let's get started. First things first. What we want to do is we're going to load in an Excel spreadsheet. It's going to be slightly different than what we've been using for a data repository file before. Rapid Miner allows you to read in Excel, CSV files, and other formats. And tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to read in some S&P 500 data, which we're going to use as a training data. So first things first, let's go get that operator. You can just type in read Excel, and here she is. And just take it and drag it over. We're going to come over here to where the parameter is, and we're going to select open. And we're going to get it from my Dropbox. I hope you signed up to Dropbox using my referral link so I can get some more free space. And I will make, I will start sharing my data files with you publicly soon. Let's get this over here. Let's do this time series training data open. And what we're going to do next is we are going to go and get a data transformation operator under the series right here data transformation and here you have m several operators differentiate integrate lag series fit trend moving average etc 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 and we're going to check out moving average a lot of people like that this make a connection here and bring this out like so so now here we're going to load in the data the spreadsheet right here the training data, it's going to be on sheet number one, row offset zero, column offset zero, that's fine, and first row as names has to be checked, moving average. So the attribute name, which in time series, in using Rapid Miner for time series is a little bit different. We don't, on the outset, identify the label and the ID and all those things. We'll do that as we progress. It's a little bit different but it's roughly the same as far as the logic and thought process. So in this case, the attribute name we're going to select for a moving average will be the close. 
The window width is 5, which is essentially your simple moving average. It's, so right now it's to 5 days. So we're going to make it, say, 200 days. And here you have a couple of other things that will help you um, calculate the moving average, but I leave these as default. Okay, we're ready to go. Let's run it. Press play. Should be done in a few seconds. Voila. Let's go to plot view. We will pull down the menu for, ser for series. Select close. And here is the S&P 500. Oops. Sorry. Let's go do this here. Here's the S&P 500. And we're going to control click moving average on the close. If I can select it. Voila, and there you go. And here you have Rapid Miner being able to build you a simple moving average, 200 day simple moving average, loading in the data. You can actually zoom in here, you can see it. There you go. Pretty straightforward. That's not very sexy, is it? We do moving averages all the time. Let's go do something different. Okay, let's replace this operator with something under series, data transformation. Let's do, oops, let's get this. Let's do fit trend. Now, this is a little more interesting. Okay, hit OK. We'll have to restore the connections. Connect it back in here. Connect it back in here. But since the fit trend, and if you've been watching my other videos, when we see these double windows, it means that it's a nested operation. So let's click on this. Okay, trend regression. We got to put an operator in here, and I know just the one. We will do the neural net that will be able to calculate a trend regression. Now you could use a support vector machine or you can use a neural net. I like to use neural nets. Support vector machines are good for things like Forex. But in this case we are doing stocks. Connect that. Okay. Let's just check here. We do have an error here and we can fix that in a second. Uh, let's do learning rate 0.5 and momentum 0.4. We'll click on decay. I'm going to go up here. Okay, now, when we use the fit trend operator, we have to specify the label attribute. And if you remember correctly here, we have not in this data specified a label, and that's fine. And you could load in raw data that has absolutely no... Um, no roles assigned to it, like ID, uh, weights, or anything of that nature. You could set those roles later. So Rapid Miner 5.0 lets you load in raw data and manipulate it within the experiment now, as opposed to in the old days before you loaded it in, you would have to monkey around by setting up the roles. You could do that with the data repositories, but a lot of people that I know in the financial world love spreadsheets, so you can just brute force in the data and select the roles later. So let's go do, let's go set the role. Let's type in set role. And here she is. Now we drag it over, make sure we touch the lines. Okay, good. Right, we click on it. The name that we want to set the role to, let's see, is the close. Target role will become the label. Let's go through and check this. Aha, select this over here. Oh, one more thing, I forgot to do it over here. I gotta select it up here as well. There we go. Okay, now let's go hit run. Now we're gonna see something interesting. Okay, let's go back to plot view. We're gonna go back to survey. I'm sorry, serial, duh. We're going to click on close and we're going to control click on trend. Well, look at that. We have a nonlinear trend. And if you zoom in over here, you could see that Rapid Miner took the entire data set. And from that data set, from the closing label, from the closing price data, created a nonlinear trend. And based on all the available